Hello and welcome to this new video. Uh, before I say anything else, I'd just like to thank everybody out there for subscribing and watching the channel. I've now surpassed 500 subscribers, so thank you very much for that. It's um, more than I ever thought I'd get, so thank you very much for the 500 or more of you that have uh, subscribed to the channel so far. In this new video, we're going to look at restoring this Lima Great Western Rail Car. It is uh, not in the best of conditions, it's quite dusty. The roof has been badly repainted and it's starting to be scratched. Under underneath, as you can see, it's really grubby. The trailing wheels are extremely stiff. That, one, that one's almost jammed solid. The drive end is not uh, too dissimilar. It needs new tires. It needs a good spruce up. Um, somebody who owned this before me has added sprung buffers to the end. Then buffers are L and ER pattern, and I will replace them with correct size buffers. I'm going to repaint the roof, and I'm also going to fit a digital decoder to it. I'll also add additional pickups to the trailing end and hopefully by the end of this video we'll have it running nice and smoothly and looking a bit more presentable than it is at the moment. It is also missing one of these drive details off that bogey there and, uh, and a coupling hook but I do have one of these coming um, off the internet so it isn't here for this video but it will be fitted at a later date. So without further ado we'll get cracking by stripping this down to its parts and trying to restore it to some sort of use. Right, first off what we've got to do is we've got to try and remove the body. The body retaining screws are missing from this loco, so hopefully it will be a relatively easy um, thing to get the body off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to remove the buffers before I do anything else. The buffers are holding the body in place. One, two, anybody attempting restorations of locomotives like this, it's always handy to have a tub with you so that you can put all the parts, screws in so that nothing gets lost that way it's easy to locate anything and you don't knock it off your workbench so let's see if we can now prise this off oh, there we go the interior is not too bad i won't be altering this at all i won't be repainting it i uh, you won't see it when it's going around and it is going to be uh, used sparringly in the outdoor alley. Right, we've got a bit of a dodgy solder joint there. Looks like that's been redone since it's left the factory and all needs tidying up. So we'll um, also, I don't know if you can pick that up, but that wire in there is almost off, which might explain why the motor doesn't work and the motor in there is quite grubby. So we'll start by removing the non-powered Bogey. There we go. Yeah, that's that is solid. So let's take a look and see what's inside there. Oops. Causing this Oops. Oh yeah, look at that. That must be the grubbiest keeper I've ever seen come out of a Lima model. That looks Almost like it's been outside in the mud. However, now that's moved, the wheels are free. So the wheel, it wasn't actually put together properly. With these wheels, I'm gonna to have to polish these up and the backs. Um, adding extra pickups, you can see there that this wheel is the live pickup wheel. That one has the black rubber insulator. We're gonna add pickups 
to this face of the wheel. And when you put them back together, obviously, remember which side is which. Okay. It's handy to keep that like that so I know which side is which. Right, now, back to the main chassis. We'll try and remove this power bogey. Oops, there goes the weight. It's unusual in the fact that it's got two different screws. This is... Uh, This is the original screw, but in the Phillips head, the one that's gone rust is not original to this model. Lima used flat headed screws, if I can get this one out. Right, I'll remove that and then I'll show you that in a second. Well, I managed to get the Phillips head screw out. The rust had affected the plastic a little bit. And there we go, that's the bogey frame removed. And then you can just lift the power bogey out. So the, the chassis itself is in pretty good nick. There's nothing uh, really that I need to do there. Mm, let's have a look at this. Yeah, it's filthy. There is crud and rubbish all over this. And them tyres are not even... They're Hornby tyres. They are far too thick for this model. In fact, that's still got remnants of the original tyre on there. <laughs> um, yeah, this could do with some... Oh, look at that. If you can see that, that is held on literally by one thread. That one, oh, there you go. One thread and it's off, so that will need sorting. These wires will be unsoldered because I'm going to uh, digitally fit it and also this capacitor will be removed as well. Right, what I'm going to do now, before I tackle the motor and clean that up, I'm going to mask the body shell up and respray the roof white, as it should be white and not light grey. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll see that afterwards. Right, whilst we wait for the uh, paint to dry on the roof of the body shell, We'll take a look inside the motor itself. Now I've undone the screws already. He says. Oh, yes, look at that. It is full of crud. There are the brushes. They will need a clean and the armature. Yeah. Needs ever such a slight clean and a degrease. My method of doing that for restoring these lean ones is to use some methylated spirits and cotton buds. So I'll do that now. Then we'll start reassembling it. And uh, actually we'll clean the armature, clean the gears. Right, we're going to scrub the wheels with a fiberglass pencil. Make them all nice and shiny. Then we'll attempt reassembly of the motor and give it a quick test with a 9 volt battery, then we'll move on to the trailing bogey and add the extra pickups, then it'll be time to wire in the decoder, so uh, we'll get on with cleaning up this and uh, speak to you in a moment. One bit of advice I've picked up from other channels, um, there's a guy called SMT Mainline that restores engines, when you clean the armatures make sure you clean these lines because carbon buildup in there can result in a short circuit and poor running so as you can see i've uh, cleaned that really well it looks totally different to what it was last time and i've burnished it with a um, fiberglass brush so now it's time to clean the actual innards and the gears of the motor bogey Right, now all the parts have been burnished and cleaned. I mean, some of the dirt off the armature was horrendous. It was thick, it was gloopy, it was not nice at all. But now the wheels are shiny. There's still a little bit more actually under there that could do with being wiped off. So we'll just get rid of that quickly. 
there is a lot of crud and grease on this model so I'm not sure what sort of life it had before it uh, came into my possession but it's uh, obviously been a hard life right that's all clean the armature is sparkling and now the brushes will just get a quick facelift to remove any built up or burnt on material that's one that's the other one and the face plate for the actual motor itself that needs a good the springs in there the springs look pretty good let's try and get them out without them flinging everywhere yeah the springs are the springs are actually quite good so that's that one lose them yeah the face plate as well it needs a good good scrub with some methylated spirits or isopropyl alcohol would probably be just as useful but i don't have any of that i use meths as my go-to substance be careful if you do use meths because it can remove finishes off models so uh, it's practice but don't get it on any surface so it's got a painted surface because it will remove there we go it will remove paint finishes right so that's that done now i'm going to have to reassemble the motor and then see if we can spark it into life i did try it off camera before filming i tried to, to get this to go it would not move it wouldn't even judder so uh, there was nothing there at all, possibly because of the damaged wiring. But uh, right, we'll reassemble that and then we'll get going. Right, time to reassemble the motor. I'll put the armature back in, make sure the um, gears mesh at the back. I meant to say before, um, when you use a fiberglass brush, just be very careful. The loose fibres get in your hands and fingers and they are quite painful. Usually... I have a damp piece of kitchen roll um, underneath where I'm working to catch any loose fibres, but I forgot this time. So uh, just be careful if you are using a fiberglass brush. And also, if you are using methylated spirits or any sort of abrasive liquid, decant some into a lid or a suitable container so that you're not working out of the bottle. And then if you knock this over, it's obviously not as big a spillage as it would be if you knocked the entire bottle over. Well, I'm happy with how the armature's cleaned up. I'm going to uh, reassemble. Before I do, I'm just going to snip the capacitor off from between the motors terminals because once I'm digital, that will not be needed. And it looks like it's seen better days anyway. So that can go in the bin. Right. This I'm also going to cut that wire, I think, because that's rather large and not original, as original lemur wire was quite thin. That is, oh, that's about as thick as the bus wire on my layout. That's, that is quite some thick wire, and I'm also going to cut it off, because I need this clip to retain the non-powered bogey, so that wire can go in the bin. Right, I'll take that wire off as well. Because it'll all be rewired once uh, I try and fit the digital chip. Right, now that's all lined up. We'll put the screws back in. Providing I've not lost them. One and two. I'll just tighten that up slightly. There we are. So that's all in. Yes, I'm meshing well. Right. Brushes. I've cleaned these as you saw before. Just pop just out of a bit. Pop one in there. And one in there. 
that, that's actually that's actually stuck that one so oh no it's gone in right now time for the springs now as they always seem to do they've connected themselves in some way when they've been sat stationary in this in this tub that's the springs in and then gently close the holders back in place you will notice that on the holder there is a tiny nub there that's where the end of the spring sits so let's push them in there and then these holders are actually a little bent out of shape that was like that when i uh, got it so i'm just going to hold them and bend them back how they should be to that's it right i'm happy with that so that's all back together so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to find my nine volt battery standard square battery now we'll see if this works now there was no life in this motor at all actually before i do that i use this from expo tool i'm just gonna put a tiny amount of lubrication on the whoop, on the gears and on the spindle there do not get any of this on the actual armature itself because that will just undo all of the work you've just done in cleaning it up i'll put a tiny amount on the axles there been a long time since any sort of maintenance was done on this motor right moment of truth is it going to turn over or are we going to have to strip it again here we go ah look at that excellent so the motor is fine and that is running just lovely if only you could smell it it's got that lovely electric smell to it that old train sets from the 80s always had and if i just look under there there's no sparks from either of the brushes let's try it the other way oh yes that is fantastic so the motor works if nothing else we've fixed the motor today so there we go and you can see how shiny and nice the wheels and that are now just have a look and that motor um sorry the armature in there it's still lovely and clean that's excellent right that is done we can put this base plate back in under there so that i don't lose it and that will ensure just making sure it's the right way round. i think that's the right way round. and then just a quick test again to make sure that's not putting any unnecessary friction on the wheels which it isn't that's brilliant right next up we will try and tackle the unpowered bogey which is quite manky and yeah i don't know what all this is but we're gonna have to clean all that off now the motor bogey has been cleaned up i'm gonna put these new traction ties on before i put the bogey frame back on they're not the easiest to do. They're uh, actually spares for Hornby um, traction tyre fitted locos that used to be in the Lima range. So the wheels are the same. And there you go, as you can see, it's uh, not quite level, but there we go. Looks better than those oversized ones that were fitted on it previously. And you can see how thick almost like elastic bands they're no good at all so once these traction tires are on i'll put it back into the uh, bogey frame there we go yeah they're on to reattach it to the chassis put it in via the top Easier said than done. There we go. And then the bogey frame holds it on. 
I might actually leave that out until I've finished the soldering actually because it'll be probably be easier to solder without that one. But yeah, new traction tyres, it's had a spruce up. It's good to go. The trailing bogey. I've uh, cleaned that wheel there, cleaned all the dust and crud off. Not looking too bad. Just a case now of cleaning the wheels up, cleaning the wheel backs of the side with the rubber washer so that uh, I can fit these additional pickups. So I'm going to burnish those with the um, fiberglass brush again and then I'll detail how I put in the additional pickups on the non-powered bogey. Right, as you can see this time I've got uh, my damp cloth so I'm just going to burnish the wheel backs and if I just do one quickly if the camera focuses on something other than my hand that quick burnish there you can see look at the difference so that will be used as an initial pickup so we'll get them burnished now Right, that's the wheels cleaned for the trailing bogey. I think you'll agree, once I get all these fibres off, they, um, they'll look quite good. Um, I'm going to clean the uh, axles as well while we're at it. And then we'll move on to reassembling the trailing bogey. So I need to clean this spring part. This is, yeah, that's going to need burnishing as well, I think, because that's, actually quite worn that's uh, quite worn down so we'll have a look at that in just a second we'll get rid of all this rubbish right what we're going to do now now that we've masked the body and we've repainted the roof which is still drying um, we've rebuilt the motor bogey, we've tested it so we know that works and we've cleaned all the wheels and the sub chassis all up so everything's nice, neat and tidy. Well, now we're going to um, add additional pickups to the trailing bogey. First thing you've got to do is get a 1.5mm drill bit and where the bogey pivot hole is in the non-driving end, drill a small hole next to it, roughly there, to allow the additional wire to pass through, like this. Just using a small pin vise and chuck, just drill a hole. You don't have to uh, use too much force. <laughs> ah. Right, we're back, this time with a much better drill bit. <laughs> It snapped because uh, when I looked at it, it obviously uh, the metal had obviously fatigued. Um, it just crumbled when I took it out of the pin vise. The whole bottom of it had just crumbled away. So it must have been a dodgy drill bit. So anyway, we'll carry on. As I was saying, you don't need to put too much pressure on. The plastic is relatively soft. And there you go. So just give that a good wiggle. So you've now got an additional hole in the chassis. The side of the bogey that's going to have the additional pickups on is this side, the side with the rubber insulating collars on. So I'll move those out of the way. For additional pickups, I've got a sheet of this thin brass. I don't know where I got it from. I have had this for years. Um, this piece will last me a good while too. I'm only going to trim off a small piece, like so. It's that thin, it actually cuts with scissors. And all you need is a small piece like that. And even that's too big. That needs to be trimmed so that it fits between those two bogey supports like that. So I'll do that now. I'll try and do it whilst on camera. Sorry if the uh, hands get in the way a little bit. A 
And one, uh, one thing I will say while I just do this, these tiny bits of brass that you cut off, don't throw them away if you can help it. Keep all the little bits of brass because they will come in handy for odd jobs, packing your rails when you're building your layout, etc. Right. Now you see that almost fits in there. It's still a little on the large side. So we'll just trim that. Any bits of brass, as I was just saying, any small pieces like this, keep, because they are handy when you're soldering and stuff. Any bits that have curled like that, they're quite sharp. Bin them, get them out of the way. Right, so that is the basis for my additional pickup. Just a small piece of brass, which will fit quite nicely in there. So now what we have to do is get some of this stuff. Phosphor bronze strip. So I'll just get a length out. You don't need too much, half an inch maybe. And just snip it off. Always cut slightly over length because it's easier obviously to trim up if you're too long than it is to add if you are too short. And basically all we're going to do is we are going to solder that onto there like so and then we'll place it on the bogey measure up for where the wheels go and bend it in place and then add the wire and i use this stuff this tcs 10 uh, 30 gauge wire nice and thin nice and durable and it's cheap so yeah we'll solder that now and then i'll come back to you shortly Right, that's the additional pickup made. There's plenty of wire there. Don't be too sparring with the wire. As I said earlier, it's easier to remove stuff than add it on. And all we do now is to, I, to attach it to the bogey frame is use some good old Loctite. Just a couple of uh, just a couple of blobs like that, and then attach the brass. Uh, pick up, make sure it's seated against the um, supports, like there we go, and just hold it in place with a screwdriver while it dries. And there we have an additional pickup fitted. It just needs trimming off, but I'll do that when the glue's dry. We'll put the wheels in, trim the, uh, bend the bronze strip slightly, trim it up, then we can reassemble that and then go to fit the decoder. I'm just going to uh, try and trim that up slightly, that phosphor bronze strip. It is slightly too long. It needs a bit of a quick trim. If I... Uh, nope, I can't get them in there. Let's just trim that off with the side cutters. There we go. Right, I'm going to bend it slightly as well, so that it into like a that sort of shape. So make sure the wheels are correct orientation, and there we go. The strip, once it's held in place, will rub along the back of the wheel, and that is your additional pickup. So I'll crack on and reassemble this bogey. And then we will go to the part where we start putting the decoder in. Then we can reassemble the, it's a little bit too much that one. Then we can reassemble the whole unit, give it a test. And then if it works on battery, jobs are good. Whilst we've been doing all that, the body shell has been drying and here it is. I think you'll agree it looks a lot better than it did. There are still one or two little tiny bits to touch up with white paint, but the spray's gone on rather nicely. It is still still a little bit damp, but it looks a damn slight better white, as it should be, than that horrible grey it had been painted. 
There are a couple of marks on the body shell there and there, which I'll try and touch up. And also some brown paint is missing on the battery boxes there like that. But uh, yeah, that looks a lot better than it did. So uh, we'll set that aside to fully cure. And then we'll go on with reassembling this bogey and putting it back in there ready for the decoder. Right, now the bogey has been reassembled. You can see before when we tried to uh, move it, the wheels were locked solid. But now it, it um, runs lovely and just before I forget, I better put some slight lubrication just in there with this Expo thin oil, just to make it a little bit easier for it to roll. Right, so that's that. That is now clean. Compare that to what it did look like. And the extra pickups you can see have been added. So now it's time to thread this wire through the hole we drilled earlier. And I broke that drill bit. Actually, there's a slight lip on there. So I've just put a fresh scalpel blade on just to take that lip off slightly. Just so it doesn't impede the bogey turning at all. Right. And then thread that in there. Pull it through. And then there we go. Oh, maybe, maybe not yet. There we go. So that bogey is now on with the additional pickups all fitted. Excellent. Jobs are good. One. Right, we'll put the power bogey back on. And then we'll start wiring it up. The uh, metal weight in the block. I'm going to have to see how much clearance there is between the two. Ready for ready for putting the um, seeing where to put the decoder the decoder may have to go the electronics will go here and the actual decoder will probably stick to the roof of the unit by the look of it because there's not much room for manoeuvring there so yeah we'll carry on then with reassembling the motor bogey Well, that was a bit more involved than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'd forgotten to add the wire that we took off earlier, so I had to add that back. And also, the crosshead screw that we saw earlier, which shouldn't be there, had actually opened up the thread too much to allow the proper lima screw to get any sort of grip. So it was a bit more involved. But anyway, it's done now and the weight's back in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover the weight with some insulation tape at the top when I can find it. We're going to insulate the top and I'm going to make a soldering pad for the wires from the pickups and the decoder. But this, you have to make sure it's imperative that that is insulated properly first. Otherwise you'll end up with a short circuit and a blown decoder and a bill of around £30, if not more, to replace what's been done. So there we go. That also will hold the ballast weight in place a bit as well. There we go. And we'll just put that in there. Right, I'll trim that to length uh, in a moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut some more of this brass. And I'm going to make some pads to solder the wires on. One for the pickups. Um, and then one for the motor wires. So that you're not actually soldering directly uh, to the motor itself. So we'll get on with that now. And then we'll trim up the insulation tape. Then we'll put the decoder in. 
Right, now we've got these two small brass pads. Um, these are what I'm going to be soldering the pickup wires to, and then from them, the decoder wire can then also be attached. So I'm just going to apply a tiny, tiny amount of flux paste. I mean, this is only the method I use to do it. Obviously, there are other methods, and uh, I've got no doubt that people will tell me if they think I'm doing it wrong. But I've used this on several Lima diesels, including the two HSTs that featured in the previous modelling on a budget video. I'm just going to add that. I just find adding that just makes it solder just that much easier. Even if the solder is so, they says it's got flux in it, it doesn't always flow very well. Right, let's touch that on there. Heat the brass up. You'll notice I'm using a old piece of timber as a soldering pad. Good piece of advice so that you don't melt your cutting mats or anything like that. Oops, can't get this round the right rate without burning my fingers. And then touch that one on there. Now both wires are... Oh no. Why didn't that stick? There we go. That's those two wires done. Now I'll um, do the blue wire. I'll just strip some cable off the end. This blue wire is the uh, additional pickup that I made. Right, sorry about that. I um, soldered the wrong wire onto the wrong pad there, so just bear with us. Right, so that's the additional new pickup wire soldered on, which then also links with the original from the motor bogey. Um, I have made a little mistake here. I used the wrong colour wire. Should have used blue when replacing that one from the motor bogey, but... For some reason it slipped my mind so uh, apologies for that just hold that in place whilst i zap this wire on here could do with a tiny bit more so we got Right, that's that on. Sorry about that, it looked a bit messy there, but it's on. So, now the pickup wires sorted. So, I've tidied the wiring up and then attached them onto here with some more of the Loctite, and then the decoder wires can be soldered on here, pickups off there, and then direct to the motor terminals. Right, so that's those two pads secured to that metal chassis weight now. And uh, I've already prepped the harness for the decoder. Now, a good way of remembering your wiring when doing DCC is uh, red and black go to track, orange and grey the other way. So red and black to track, orange and grey to the motor. The spare wires I've trimmed just enough in case I ever use them in the future. If I ever want to add a lighting kit, there's enough wire there to work with. So I'm just going to quickly solder the red and the black wires to the pickup pads that we've made. So we'll get the red one and just gently Tag that on there, just enough to melt the solder, that's one, and then the black wire, oh, a little bit more solder, tiny bit more solder, and then the black wire 
onto the other end and it's unsoldered that wire in the process which is not surprising because I always do that right so that's them two secure and now the orange wire to the motor terminal I'm going to use the solder joints that are already present just to save a little bit of time and the grey wire which is there can go onto there No, we'll remove that old piece of. Uh, there's actually an old piece of wire, right? Uh, yeah, wire stuck to that. So we'll remove that onto the sponge. There we go. Now, it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but that's the way I do it. Now that this is soldered, and make sure the joints are all nice. I'll put another piece of tape over that to make sure it's insulated, and then I'll tidy the wiring up with some more tape and then we can attach the decoder to the harness and then we can test it with the battery um, some batteries sorry some decoders work with the battery test some do not it depends on the manufacture of the decoder but now that's all done and the wiring's finished we will now attempt to get that to run with the decoder so bear with us right we'll attach the tcs t6x decoder make sure it's the correct way around for the uh, whoops I think, that's the, I think that's the correct way around yep so we'll just push that on there ever so gently does eventually clip in like that right that's in and all the wiring's in and I've also tidied the wiring up and put the seat unit back in right let's get this piece of spare track and make sure that decoder's out of the way I've not actually tried this before doing this on camera so this will be the first for all of us if it works jobs are good and if it doesn't then it's a morning wasted so here we go let's see if it will support DC oh yes that's a little bit underpowered because the battery is running out right let's test these additional pickups that I've done put the wheels on the battery terminals Oops. And there we go you can hear the motor running There's nothing on that one that may need adjusting just slightly so I'll adjust that in a second but it works it's a runner we have a runner the body shell has now dried so I'll reassemble this with the decoder in the roof then we'll put the new buffers on and we'll call that done for now until we can test it and program it on the main layout. Right, that's it back together. It's already starting to look a lot better than it was when we first looked at it in the start of the video. It does need a dust. I'll get this old stiff brush just to dust it. Maybe I should have done that before masking and painting the roof, but there's dust all over the front of it where it's been stored somewhere but uh, overall <laughs> I'm really pleased with that there is a small detail missing off the end there and the motor bogey isn't quite seated right I think that may be the screws I might have to try and find some replacements or even a replacement bogey for that bogey frame for that end because where they've put that screw in that isn't lemur it has warped the plastic a little bit but we've got a runner so right these are markets oleo buffers they're a lot bigger than the ones that were on there but these units did have big round buffers on them they are slightly small for the holes that's going to need some adhesive 
to hold that in there so I'm going to pop a little bit on each one and then attach them and it will improve the look of this unit. I uh, did toy with the idea of taking the couplings off and adding three link couplings just to complete the model but I'm going to be running this unit on the preserved outdoor railway and like the idea of running it with an auto trailer and uh, it's okay pulling it and um, pulling it right but pushing it or propelling an auto trailer it will not work very well and it could derail on curves so I'm going to leave the lemur couplings on for now could change my mind in the future I mean I haven't got an auto trailer at the minute so I may have to buy one but again we will have a look once that glue sets and there we go that has improved the look of the model front that's loads that's lots better than the buffers that were on it which were these Backman l &E r pattern now they were sprung but they're incorrect there are four of them so I'll keep them as spares and use them on something else in the future but yeah this is starting to look quite good and it runs so it's gone from the bad wreck that we started with that was absolutely filthy one of the dirtiest engines I've ever had to work on to be quite honest to what we've got now and it doesn't work this end there we go is amazing the transformation is brilliant and it's only took probably six hours work so far that includes waiting for the paint to dry though so it's uh, about three hours on the actual model coupled with waiting for the paint to dry right so there we have it that is well a comprehensive overhaul i think you'd agree it's been cleaned up all the crud's gone this power drive thing is missing off this bogey and also the bogey isn't level it won't it won't sit quite level on the track the actual bogey frame itself has warped over time and the person who owned it before me has used um has used an incorrect screw which has made the matters worse I uh, will look on the internet and try and source a replacement bogey from somewhere. But until then, I've set up this slight test track and I'm going to use the 9 volts. But she runs in both directions. Not very well, I must admit, on the 9 volt battery. It does tend to drain in quite quickly. But that is DCC fitted. It's had its roof repainted. Brand new buffers and a general spruce up. So now we'll go and see it on the layout on Abbott's Newton. We'll program it and run it. And uh, I think we can call that a successful restoration. Salvaged from the scrap bin. I didn't pay a great deal for it at all because it was absolutely shocking. But if you compare these views to the ones I did at the start, there's the dodgy screw. You can see uh, the new traction tyres the polished wheels and the additional pickups and how I did it as requested so I'm about I'm going to touch up the brown paint and cream paint in places and then we'll see it on the layout next having a bit of a, a run round. Well, I've removed the bogey covering because obviously we saw before it was not level and interestingly on the bogey itself is a quite a tall nub and a thin one the bogey motor, or the motor bogey even, is on backwards. Now, where the screw holes are, that was like that when I started restoration and I missed it. So now, I've got to take all this apart and reconnect the wires correctly and find some screws that will hold that in place in the large hole that's been left while I'm using this cross-headed screw. So the restoration continues. Right, now we've ascertained that there was a mistake in whoever had this before me, putting it back together. That sounds a bit of a cop-out, but I did genuinely miss that fact. And um, we're gonna have to take this body off and redo the wiring. 
I'm having to do it on the edge of the baseboard because the workbench is covered in boxes full of scenery stuff from working on the layout for the next update. So we'll take the body off now and swap the wheels over in the dummy end because now both um, insulated sides are on one side. Now I've put that correct. I'll have a look through my spare screw box to see if I've got another Lima screw knocking about that I can replace that one with. Right, that's the wires and wheels all switched over now, as how they should be. So we'll test it with the old uh, battery test at the moment to see if we can get it running again. Obviously not, huh? Well, that's interesting. It's not actually turning over at all. I'll tell you what, we'll have to put it on the layout to make sure there's not a short circuit something I've missed. Right, we'll try it now on the DCC. No, there's definitely a short circuit. Definitely a short circuit. Back to the drawing board regarding the wiring. Hmm. Well, after much deliberating, it was stupid schoolboy error. I'd put one of the wheels in the trailing bogey in the wrong way around. So now, if we try and get it to go ah yes so at long last we've got the wiring sorted and as you can see the try and demonstrate with a bit of cardboard the wheels this end are not actually touching the track and the motor's running which proves that the additional pickups again are working and it's wired up how it should be I'll reassemble the motor bogey in its correct position and then we'll test the unit again. Right, we are now all back together again for the second time. I've just put the buffers on to make sure they're gluing correctly again and I also raided the box of spares I have and got two retaining screws for the body and also a spare lima pattern coupling hook so it's now looking complete it's now starting to look nice the wiring sorted but more importantly that drive bogey now is level and correct why I missed that at the start, I honestly don't know. But there we go. So nothing left to do now but test it on the layout. Fingers crossed, we've sorted this one out. Right, here we are. We're going to test this. I've not tested it before filming, so you'll find out at the same time I do if we've done a good job. There we go. All right. works although the decoder takes quite a bit to get going well, maybe because it's a Lima one but oh, that slow speeds quite good Well, it's running a treat. It's been running for about 10 minutes. It's running lovely. I think we can safely say that we've rescued this rail car from oblivion.
we go. That's the Lima. Great Western Rail car. Restored, cleaned, digital fitted and improved, ready for a new life on the Garden Railway once it's finished. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I must apologise for a couple of the schoolboy errors I made while restoring it. Breaking my drill bit, putting the wheels in the wrong way around, but uh, I wasn't guilty of putting the motor bogey back in, back to front. That was already done, and I just failed to pick that up. So thank you so much for watching. Again, as I said at the start, thank you to all of you, 500 plus subscribers now. And stay tuned to the channel as we've got more content coming soon.